Hello there, I'm Nero Bax, and welcome back to you fool. The last time we, uh, we were messing about, I kind of learned how estates worked, the most basics of them. And uh, we also got a second colonist set up, as well as some, uh, well, conquistador potential. But as you can see, it turned out to be uh, quite expensive, but uh, no biggie, we'll continue working where we left off. And they colonized the game. Now, I'm just going to keep on colonizing this entire area, because uh, it's kind of neat. Since we have a... Uh, does the boost not work anymore? Hmm. I'm a little bit unsure, but basically before you could just uh, have two colonies next to each other and they would boost the growth rate. But if that's not the case, then we might just pick otherwise. Now, I'm learning a bit about states. I'm basically having it up on uh, my second monitor, so I can read about that while uh, the colonies and everything goes on. So, as the episode here keeps on going, I'm going to learn more about how things work, which is good for us. So I'm researching the standardized pikes, which is military tech 5, combo with increased by 2, infantry shock 0.15, camera shock 0.2, and we get three new types of infantry. So this is actually pretty damn decent. It should mean that I will have no problems whatsoever with the natives. I can just leave my... Uh, it doesn't matter what troops I have, I, I can just leave them there and they'll sort out the, uh, the issue. Let's just go for good old longbows. Not really, that is really that much of a, uh, of a difference here. But as I said, this means that I can now, if need be, start worrying the, uh, the natives. But uh, with that said, I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading about states now, while my colonies grow, and uh, hopefully I'll be back shortly. I'm understanding a little bit now about how the, uh, the states and territories are working. So it's basically that they've turned the corner into two-way process, and overseas is now territory-based. Uh, with that said, however, it's still going to be a little bit uh, longer until I completely understand how it works with the states, uh, with everything, because apparently if you do something stupid, you can uh, lose the uh, the status of a state. Basically, it becomes territory again, which means that I will have to recall the thing again, which costs admin points. I have to be careful with that. I might actually do something very, very stupid when I assign states right next to my capital. I might actually have to move my capital in the future just to sort that out, because this area is not really that rich either. I might just put my capital here somewhere. It also says that, as far as I know, that basically creating a state on a different continent is expensive. Like, it gives you a 25%, if I remember. I just quickly skimmed through it. So that's quite expensive, actually, for just a little bit of an extra boost. So that's something to be considerate of. And something I will have to uh, have to check. And uh, read on. I'll basically have to learn how estates, states, territories, etc., work with it, you know, we, how they work with each other, how they match. So that will basically be my required reading before I start the next episode. And I'll try and do one little piece of information and basically just grow my knowledge as I'm recording. Because again, I'm pressed for time, I can't just sit down and learn everything. And for some reason my recording software does not like switching between screens, so I kind of just had an area and just read through that when I'm on my downtime. Now with that said, we did take a uh, our third exploration idea here. This gives us plus 50 to colonial range. With that, we also get one of our national ideas, which gives uh, plus 5 to morale of armies. Now, all of my ideas say that our national ideas are not that strong. They're basically at their first level, to keep my uh, nation under 200 points total. So that's decent. Now, with that said, we are currently still working on colonies. Money is uh, starting to become tight, though, which is a... Uh, it's a major concern, let's just be honest, because uh, having to pay that much money for all of this is not good. Now, with that said, I could potentially just lower my army maintenance. They have been, again, they are capable of handling the natives with ease to some degree right now. So lowering the army maintenance should be fine, I hope. Meaning hope is key here. The reason why I've been losing money right now is because I've uh, lost the bonus that I got from researching the next tie of admin tech two years early. So that boost is gone, and right now I'm getting... Uh, well, I'm, I'm being punished for that. So, we're going to have to I lower the arm maintenance to... That's dangerous, but it should be fine. And we'll have to lower this... It basically means that the colonies themselves will grow, grow slower. Uh, usually I would get... Uh, as you can see here, due to just a tiny bit of lowering I did, I lose 13.7 uh, people a year. So it slows it down quite drastically, which is, of course, a problem. So we'll have to see how we handle that. 
Now with that said, my dude in sub attack has been kicked out, both of my diplomats have by now, but I don't know if I want to do anything in particular there. But Havana has grown enough to become self-sustaining, which is good. Now I am very tempted to turn this into territory. Now where is my territory map? States and territories. Okay. So as you can see, apparently the entire island here is one state, it looks like. So I could potentially just create a state here because I'm going to colonize it all. But uh, it would be nice to see what it would actually fall under a state before I clicked on it. As you can see here, this is the state that I've created. And it does have some more provinces that we can just toss in under. But uh, turning, turning, the, uh, turning Havana here, or Cuba as it is into a state is perfectly fine. Again, I need to just uh, core this area to just boost my uh, boost my everything because autonomy instantly falls to zero when you do when you do this. So it's not a bad move on uh, on my part, I dare say. And we're going to keep on just taking the entire area and coring it because again, it will boost my it should boost my income to the point where I can keep uh, two colonies running side by side. A state's demand control of provinces, as you can see here, because uh, we're growing. We can gain a point of corruption, or we can try to eradicate the problem. At this point, we'll gain that point of corruption. I'm lo I'll lose it in here anyways, due to uh, due to apparently some modified by me. No, again, this is an Iron Man mode, so I just made it set up the rules on its own. I didn't actually know it would do that, so not really much to do about that. But both of these states demand provinces. Hmm. Interactions. Demand military support. Call diet. Okay, so let's see here. Isn't there a states? Sorry, not states. A no political, no economic. There should be an estates map mode. I need to just go through this and reset these things. Uh, there we go, estates. So as you can see, I've set up uh, my estates here, and I'm just going to keep on doing that, just keep them kind of connected, I guess. So let's just add you to... Summer. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's add you to the... Uh... Okay, so it actually gives modifiers to the land itself. That's interesting. But we're barely now scraping by with uh, being able to run two colonies. So again, once we, if I if I want to add another colony up with this, we need to earn four ducats extra month. So it's going to be hard to get there. But colonizing the islands with the value that they have should probably be enough. I might perhaps have to consider the uh, vassalizing if possible the natives, but uh, right now. It's not something that I will be focusing on doing. I also have to read up on corruption, of course, but right now it's not really a problem, as you can see. Kamgir. The uh, population is reduced by 50%, or I lose 50 ducats. I think we're going to sacrifice those 17 people. I'll be honest. Morin is almost done, though, so that's fine. Yes, I love a good story. Uh, no. Let's say prestige isn't really that important for me right now. It doesn't really help me with anything I'm currently trying to pull off, so I don't need it. Now, with that said, I'm going to go back into hibernation, do a little bit more reading, and uh, let our colonies grow. Now, this is the kind of problem we have uh, smugglers running rampant, which is definitely an issue. Now, if I turn this to about mid, we're going to just do this so I can get the money to actually solve this issue, because smugglers running rampant is a 10-year malice. That I don't want to deal with right now. So I can just do that for, we'll lose, basically we lost a couple of colonies over a month, which is bad of course, but it gives us the money required to stop the smugglers, so we're going to do that. The uh, malice is of course a 10% decrease in both taxes and uh, and trade, which is not something that would be good right now. It would probably hurt me quite a bit in the long run, as you might imagine. Now with that said, uh, I realized that with Cuba now being basically our territory. We can start moving, uh, oh sorry, the Caribbean. As we keep on growing the Caribbean, we're also going to get full control of the trade node. Now the trade node is one that a lot of them connect with. As you can see here, we have uh, 
the Rio Grande Great Trade Node, Mexico, Panama, which is ours, and Caribbean node is also part of the land here. So it's basically perfect for me to uh, to exploit. And we can also send money up from South America. Basically, all nodes can be joined together in Caribbean, or we can send it further to Chesapeake, or even further up north. But we're probably just going to, when we get more uh, traders, we're probably just going to try and make the Caribbean node the most valuable as we can, because we can lock down a lot of the uh, a lot of the trade right there. So it should definitely be decent enough. Now this is kind of worrying though. As you can see here, Portugal, Castile, and France are all wielding power in this node. I have no idea if they know of the new world because I am in the area. It would seem that way, which is kind of troublesome because I haven't actually seen a single ship of theirs. It might just be that it's a bug, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to figure that out later. But if it is because they're the uh, because it's connected to one of their nodes, they are powering. That would be weird, but it might be a new feature that I don't know about. Let's just be honest; it would be something I would do. Land of opportunity, global salary increase plus twenty. It will that will definitely give us quite a bit of boost. Seventy a year now, which means that uh, well, our colony should grow a lot quicker, which is always nice. Uh, I'm going to go back into read mode, if you will, see if I can uh, learn something new, and uh, we'll just keep on letting our colonies grow. There we go, Moron has become uh, self-sustaining, and we're just going to keep on colonizing what we can. We're also going to core it, which costs 30 administrative power, but it's an instant process, and with that we should keep getting a uh, decent amount of money, well, hopefully in the future. But of course the problem here is also that it uh, increases the maintenance. So, it's a problem, but uh, again, this is something that we should be able to handle. It's an offer, we can refuse actually, let's just take those five prestige. We don't have any, well, real big interest in creating any trouble for ourselves. Now, again, these guys actually don't know that we exist, which is very interesting, because they have, as you can see earlier, they do wield power in the, uh, they did wield power in the trade node, which is awkward, to say the least. So I guess that's just a, uh, I guess it, you could just call that a side effect, I guess, of the fact that, uh, as I said, it's probably just a side effect of the fact that uh, I have Western tech and Western knowledge due to that tech. So uh, I don't know how it will work in the future, but that's how it worked now. Now, again, with that said, we're going to focus on colonies again. I will not be hiring any uh, advisors, although it would help with attack. It's not really... Again, since I'm playing as already westernized, it's not really a big deal. I don't need those extra attack points. I can lie behind attack or two and still be able to be effective against the Europeans if I can just keep up the colonization game. We can once again take a idea. This time it's uh, Viceroy's, which won't actually help us a lot because we uh, won't really be going overseas for us. But the next one will be pretty uh, magnificent, three colonies. I'm not a colonist, but I don't know if we can actually afford him right now. That's the problem. We can set up the colony, but we can't really... Well... We can't really... Uh, pay for it, if you will. But uh, can we do it? It's just been uh, completed, which is good. We'll, uh, again, just continue our part. And instant call that thing, because... Uh, why not? It should bring us a little bit more money. And as you can see, uh, potentially we could just try and save up some money and then use the third colonist, but uh, we'll have to see. As we keep on growing, it will, uh, it will help. But with that in mind, we might also have to go for another set of ideas than expansion right away. Although expansion does give some... Uh, not really some, it gives two bonuses. We will get an additional merchant though, and that could actually be really good. But what we might actually end up doing is going for... Uh, trade ideas, but we'll have to take something else before, so we'll have to see. P probably humanist. It's uh, been a pretty good one, and it is still. Potentially innovation could also be uh, something that could potentially be good for us, but uh, we'll have to see. Economic could also be used just to boost our, uh, well, money. But uh, let's see. Administration, of course, is also pretty decent, but... Uh, Again, we'll have to see. It depends on a lot of factors. We can upgrade our military again to uh, Archibus, 
level 6. Military tanks plus 0.25, combat with increased by 2, infantry fire 0.2, infantry shock 0.3, and we now have the ability to build barracks. Pretty decent. We'll also get uh, workshops done pretty soon, which is nice. Now. Naval bonus minus 10%. Does this mean that these guys have Western eyes? I don't think so. I hope not, because according to this thing, they're ahead of me in tech. Well, this game has been weird from the get-go, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. But yeah, I think actually uh, the thing is, I hovered over this, but apparently. Uh, achievements are disabled, and this kind of uh, confirmed it. It says that I'm playing on easy, but uh, when I started this game, it gave me the option that uh, basically the game would set everything that I needed, and apparently that does not happen, which is kind of uh, disappointing. And I pressed that way too quick, because apparently I got some bonuses for being ahead in time again, which will probably uh, lead to increased money, which boost me again but yeah we're saving up a decent chunk of money here for uh, when we get the third colony so we'll probably be able to run a third colony half of the time which uh, will definitely be very very helpful now with that said I'm going to end the episode here I'm going to have to check out the saving itself it is easy uh, if I can mod it the saving that is to just up the difficulty set the historical nation lucky I might uh, if not I'll probably just continue the game and then I'll get the uh, achievement uh, on my own time sometime later. It's not really a very hard achievement. I just thought it would be nice to do to uh, basically get back into the game. If it's not, I'll figure it out once I get it done if it actually works or not because the uh, the save game says it works but the game says in game says it doesn't work so it's kind of a, a weird scenario. But uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!